Euro 2004 was considered by many as one of the least entertaining in the tournament's history. Yet, this same tournament has become one of the most talked about. Truly, the 2004 edition was expected to be unique. It was the first European competition to be played in eight cities and the third since the tournament was increased to 16 teams. However, not many people would have predicted just how unique it would turn out to be. The tournament was hosted by Portugal and featured a host of top stars like Czech, Zambrota, Milan Barros, Figo, Henri, Owen, Gerard, Rooney and Cristiano Ronaldo. And yet, it was an underdog who became the centre of attraction. Ten amazing stadiums, eight beautiful cities, 16 passionate countries, but there could only be one winner. Who would that be? Well, unless you already know, we're about to find out. Join us as we delve into the raw, unfiltered story of how one of the world's most unfancied teams battled its way into the final of Europe's most prestigious football tournament. Before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and ring that notification bell so you never miss any of our videos. And without further ado, let's get started into one of football's biggest controversies. On the 12th of October 1999, in Aachen, Germany, Portugal were announced as hosts for Euro 2004, beating off stiff competition from Spain and a joint bid put together by Austria and Hungary. Immediately, Portugal started making concrete preparations for the tournament. The opening ceremony and first game were to be played at the Estadio de Drago in Porto, while the final was fixed for the 65,000 capacity Estadio de Luz in the nation's capital, Lisbon. The entire nation was naturally excited going into the tournament. Beyond hosting, Portugal also had quite a solid team, with some of the country's golden generation coming into their prime at the tournament. The likes of Luis Figo, Maniche, Ricardo Carvalho, Deco and the young kid on the block Cristiano Ronaldo were expected to shine. The dates were set and everyone waited for the opening game with bated breath. The tournament kicked off with the group stages and it began with what was considered a shocking result. After the opening ceremony, the hosts Portugal set things in motion at the Estadio de Drago, playing against the unfancied Greece side. Seven minutes into the opening game, playing against the hosts and tournament favourites Portugal, Georgios Karagounis put the underdogs in front with a well-taken strike, stunning an entire nation and indeed the whole of Europe. If Portugal thought this was a fluke, they were in for more of a shock as Angelo Bacines made it 2-0 to Greece from the penalty spot in the 51st minute. Portugal huffed and puffed, trying everything they could to drag themselves back into the game, but the Greeks stood their ground. The new kid on the block, Cristiano Ronaldo, glanced in a header in the dying minutes of the game. It was, however, only a consolation goal as Greece held out for a famous opening day victory at the European Championships. Greece continued their incredible run in the second game, battling another tournament favourite, Spain, to a draw. Eventually, they lost 2-0 to Russia in their final group game. Portugal, on the other hand, rallied around after the shocking opening day defeat to Greece. They bounced back against Russia and produced an incredible performance of the final group game against Spain to top the group. Greece took the second spot ahead of Spain based on goal difference. Ultimately, the biggest showdown in Group B was the match that saw the two European giants face off. France showed why they were the defending champions by beating England 2-1. Both goals scored by the great Zinedine Zidane. But England also had their own star, with 18-year-old wonder kid Wayne Rooney taking centre stage as England beat Switzerland 3-0 and Croatia 4-2 to qualify as runners-up. In Group C, Sweden, Denmark and Italy were tangled in a three-way tie as matches between all three ended in draws. All three teams beat Bulgaria, the whipping boys of the group. Eventually, Sweden and Denmark went through, while Italy were eliminated alongside Bulgaria based on the number of goals scored. Group D had the Czech Republic, Germany, the Netherlands and Latvia, but it was the Czechs who incredibly came out on top. They were the surprise of the tournament as they won all three group games beating Latvia 2-1, stunning the Netherlands in a 3-2 win before downing Giants Germany with an unprecedented 2-1 victory. Germany failed to make it past the group stages, as the Netherlands qualified second in the group and Latvia crashed out. So with that, the group stages were done and dusted, filled with disappointing defeats, controversies, epic triumphs and breakout stars. Of the 16 teams that made it to Portugal, only 8 were left. The 8 teams who made it to the quarter-finals were Portugal, Greece, England, France, Sweden, Denmark, Czech Republic and the Netherlands. The matchups were tantalising and promised even more drama. First up was Portugal v England. The game had barely kicked off when Michael Owen put England ahead within two minutes. 
Portugal didn't give up, however. Spurred on by an electric home crowd, they battled on until Helder Pastiga conjured up a late equaliser in the 83rd minute. The drama wasn't done there, as Sol Campbell, the English defender, put his team ahead for the second time, but the ecstasy was cut short as the goal was disallowed for a foul on Portuguese goalkeeper Ricardo. Both teams continued battling relentlessly. A goal apiece in extra time sent the match into a nerve-wracking penalty shootout. Eventually, Ricardo emerged as the hero of the day as England lost 6-5 to Portugal with the goalkeeper scoring the winning spot kick himself. That wasn't the end of the conversation though. Replay showed that Frank Lampard's penalty, which was deemed to have been a miss, had actually crossed the line. Unfortunately for England, no VAR in 2004, which meant the hosts controversially soldiered onto the semi-finals. In the second quarter-final game, everyone wanted to see how the underdogs Greece would fare against one of the continent's best teams, France. Their style of play had won them as many admirers as it did critics. The Greeks didn't seem too bothered by the criticism because they began the quarter-final game just as they ended the group stage. They made it almost impossible for French stars like Henri and Zidane to make their presence felt. On the other end, Angelo Cherestaeus nicked one goal and Greece became the first team to beat both the hosts and the holders in the same tournament. France was left shell-shocked. The critics were furious, but the Greek fairy tale was alive for at least one more game. The thrilling quarter-final encounter between Sweden and the Netherlands dragged on for 120 minutes, with both teams trying and failing to score a single goal between them. Finally, it was up to penalties to make the difference. Against the odds, the Dutch powered on to a 5-4 shootout victory, effectively breaking the country's penalty curse in major tournaments. In the last quarter-final game, the Czech Republic completely dominated as they overpowered Denmark 3-0, with top marksman Milan Baros scoring a brace to seal the fate of the Danes. Euro 2004 had now entered its penultimate round of games. The host country was still in the running for the ultimate prize, which means the entire country was buzzing, looking forward to the two semi-final games, which would decide who made it to the showdown final match in Lisbon. Who would take home Europe's biggest football prize? Well, keep watching to find out. Hosts and tournament favourites Portugal were set to face the Netherlands, who were still buzzing from their quarter-final match penalty shootout victory against Sweden. It was a tense affair. Both teams showed that they didn't make it to that stage by accident, putting up a performance that had everyone on the edge of their seats at every turn. Teenage star Cristiano Ronaldo continued his brilliant form for his country, netting the first goal in the tie, while Manish added another to give the hosts some breathing space. Jorge Andrade put the ball into his own net, but it was only a consolation goal for the Dutch. The scenes across Portugal were crazy, as the hosts made it to the final for the first time in their history. The second semi-final game was harder to predict. The Czech Republic were coming into the match on the back of four straight victories, the only team with a 100% record in the tournament, and they'd played incredibly attacking football. However, Greece had shown throughout the tournament that they were no pushovers. True to their style, the Greeks suffocated their opponents. The Czech Republic hit the bar, but the game continued goalless into extra time. However, things changed dramatically when a Trianos Delas header secured a dramatic victory for Greece, setting the stage for an epic final clash against the host Portugal. It was all down to one last game. The game the whole of Portugal, and indeed the whole of Europe, had been looking forward to since the hosts were announced in 1999. So, what would it be? Would Greece, an unfancied, boring side that had bullied and defended their way to the final, take Europe's biggest prize? Or would there be a first European Championship victory for a Portuguese side with some of the world's finest talents, right on home soil, with an entire nation behind their back cheering them on? On July the 4th, 2004, at 7.45, the much-anticipated final kicked off. The Portuguese were all over their opponents, prodding and probing, trying to find a gap in between the brick wall that was the Greek defence. Greece, as they had done throughout the tournament, stood their ground and held on. Just before the hour mark, in one of their rare forays forward, Greece won a corner. From the ensuing delivery into the box, Angelo Christmas once again rose to the occasion and powered in a header beyond the despairing dive of the Portuguese goalkeeper. The tens of thousands of home fans inside the Estio de Luz Stadium were silenced. Portugal, though, were not to be deterred. They came roaring back at the restart, sending waves upon waves of attack towards the Greek defence. Time was ticking away, yet the Greeks were resolute. The Portuguese dream was dying. The hopes of an entire nation were crumbling right before everyone's eyes. And still the Greeks held firm. With 90 minutes completed, the referee added five more. Five minutes for the host to find an equaliser, or five minutes for a Greek fairy tale to be entrenched in the annals of history forever. 
Portugal soldiered on, but despite their best efforts, they could not find the elusive equaliser. The final whistle was blown and Greece had done the unthinkable. As an underdog, they'd won the European Championships against all odds, beyond all imagination. Portugal was stunned, Europe was shocked, the world was silenced. Greece had done it. And that is the story of how Greece, who went into UEFA Euro 2004 as 80 to 1 underdogs, etched their names into football folklore, defeating host Portugal 1 0 in the final in Lisbon. Greece stood tall as champions, embodying the essence of football's unpredictability. They were roundly criticised. Their style of play was more scrutinised than any other team in the tournament, yet they stayed true to themselves and emerged champions in the end. The tournament showcased the beautiful game's twists and turns, the triumph of the underdogs and moments that will be talked about forever. Thank you for joining us on this exciting journey through the captivating stories and rich history of football. We hope you enjoyed exploring the hidden corners of the beautiful game and reliving the moments that have left an indelible mark on football. Don't forget to subscribe to Sport Intelligence for more riveting football stories, incredible anecdotes and insightful analysis. If you're as passionate about football as we are, hit that notification bell so you never miss out any of our latest uploads. Until next time, keep your love for football alive and keep kicking.